was not one of those ones in high school who knew what they wanted to be while they were in school and they had this clear path laid out for them. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I went to college, I dropped out of college, I went back to college, I dropped out again. I did a very non-traditional route and so it wasn't until I was probably 27 that I realized that things in my life needed to change and I made the decision to go to law school. So I'm Juanita Ellis, I'm an attorney at Cape for Family Law. So for some people I recognize that family is everything and fighting for that family has to be a priority for them. And my job is to give them the tools to fight. But for other people, um, trying to attain a work-life balance and not be punished for that, for them to recognize that, that they do have to work, but that because they have to work, that shouldn't mean that they are viewed as loving their child any less or should have less time with their child because they have to support a household. I think that we have to recognize that there's those folks out there too and they're just as important. Being a mom has changed me in so many ways. I would say that first and foremost, it has made me so much more empathetic as an attorney to clients who are going through a custody battle. I realize now that one night away from your child is too big. And so me having to talk to clients about joint custody or primary custody or secondary every other weekend schedules, whereas before I could just say them like they were part of life. I recognize now that, that having your child eight days a month is a big deal, it's a big deal. Whereas I may not have been able to see that as much then. I have a family, I have a husband, and I have a 13, almost 14 month old son. And um, I have stepchildren, one of which just got married. So I, I, I had an interesting turn of events in my, in my personal life where I went from me, uh, living the dream and, and grinding and working hard, to now I have a child, I have a husband, and I have step babies, and um, I wouldn't change it for the world. My dad uh, was my stepdad, but we, we didn't consider ourselves that, and he raised me. So my dad died about three years ago, and he was my first mentor. He showed me what it was to love, what it was, <clears throat> what it was to be successful, what it was to want more, and, and how to fight for that. So I, um, when I, I owned my own practice for, for a while, I, and um, and during that, you know, owning my own practice, a lot of cases coming through doors, and family law cases, cases started walking in, and I started representing clients in family law, and I realized that um, I, I had found my strength. I had found sort of that place that I was comfortable, and I was um, excelling in, and I, and I felt good about it. I felt good about how I was helping my clients. So I think I'm, I think I'm a great attorney because I, I. First, I recognize what my clients want and need. I know what their goals are, and I can see a clear path to attain those goals. And I can help them behind the scenes, which I think is just as important as being more aggressive in a courtroom or, or whatever our courtroom approach is. We behind the scenes helping them to achieve that and helping them to see that there's gonna be a new normal for them. And I'm serious about reaching your goal and helping you get to your goal. So my favorite clients are the clients that can come into me and recognize that they're probably in the worst moment of their life but that there is a silver lining and we'll find it together. So I've had a lot of hurdles uh, as being a lawyer. I think first was coming out of law school and um, not in realizing that even though I've, I've just spent all this time and, and uh, all this emotion and, and money and everything that I wasn't quite ready to practice law as much as I thought I was. Um, and, and there's some training that goes into that. I mean, you know, being in a courtroom and seeing how it works. So I think that was hurdle number one was recognizing my own need for ongoing work and, and uh, to keep grinding, to keep working towards being what I am now. And then I think hurdle number two was finding my niche. You know, um, again, you, you don't know what you're gonna be good at until you really give it a good shot. And so I went through I went through several different types of, of law practice and what kind of work really strikes a chord with you. And I'm so glad that I found family law and this is where I'm where I'm at now. So arguing for my clients is important because I'm their voice. I recognize that. I recognize that they come to me and they air out all of their concerns, all of their worries, all of their fears, their anxiety. And it's my job to formulate that into a legal argument that I can present in front of the court. And my clients want me to do that. They want me to argue for them because they can't argue for themselves. I like to present those facts in a way that I think will be welcomed by the court rather than more of an emotional, sad way. I also like to have fun in court, I will say. I, I um, before, before hearings, after hearings, I try to bring 
a little levity to what's going to be a very difficult situation. And I try to walk away from the room happier than when we walked in. Judges make the wrong decisions on occasion, and that's hard. That's hard for the attorney. It's hard for the client. It's hard for the attorney because we're invested in your case as well, in the outcome. And we know the law, we know how it should have gone. Um, it's also hard for the attorneys because then we second guess ourselves. Did I, did I miss something? Could I have presented something differently? Um, we lose sleep over it. We, we dream about it. We, you know, we eat and sleep what we do. And in some cases have more of an impact than others. I, I recognize that. But when a judge makes the wrong decision, we, we have to forge ahead and we have to attempt to figure out where things went wrong. If, if it was on our end, we fix it and we move forward. Um, if the judge just made the bad decision, then there's an appeals process that I would recommend my clients look at. It's important to hire an attorney that cares because you care and you want somebody who will be there caring with you, who will be supporting that end goal. You don't want somebody who's just looking for a paycheck. You want somebody who's invested in your case and in the outcome of your case and, and somebody who loves being an attorney.